Hudson County View Live at Uncut. I'm your host for what you see is what you get and what you don't is better yet, John R. Heides. It's a pleasure to be back at Hudson Media Group after the summer hiatus. And, uh, you know, we're just going to get right into it. Look, there's a lot to talk about. First of all, uh, it was the 21st anniversary of 9-11, as uh, we all know well. And the Hudson County and North Bergen officials gathered at 79th Street of Boulevard East to unveil a new monument. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, unfortunately, there was more tragedy around 9-11. A uh, police officer who was actually a former MLB pitcher uh, who was a, Jersey, was a Jersey City resident actually died when he was driving to the Manhattan 9-11 Memorial. So a very sad story, but we're going to tell you what happened there as well. And of course, on the political front, uh, we haven't been here in a while. There's a whole lot to talk about. There's $89 million coming back to the Jersey City Board of Education. That was after a provision of the American Rescue Plan was challenged. So we're going to talk about what that means for this underfunded district. We're also going to be chatting a little bit about the Jersey City Council meeting from last week. Still calls for Councilwoman at large, Amy DeGees, to resign in light of her hit and run, though the calls are not as drastic as they were last month, so we're going to touch on that. We're also going to talk about this lawsuit as part of the ongoing feud between CarePoint Health, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas, which is, of course, the owner of the Jersey City Medical Center at Hudson Regional Hospital. We're also going to be chatting about the police body cam video released in the West New York fatal shooting on June 3rd. This was when a man approached police with two guns, as you could clearly see in the video. He was uh, fatally shot, and also an officer was injured, but made a full recovery. And today, I'm actually sitting right next to Hudson County Commissioner Bill O'Day, of course, a representative of Jersey City. We have a lot to talk about, so all that, maybe a little more, right after this word from our sponsors. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hi, I'm Elisa Sintron with some good news. The North Bergen Pool Complex is open. Let's go check it out. New Jersey's best pool complex opens seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. with pools for every age. With a main pool, a lap pool, a kiddie pool, and a splash pool. The pool complex also has concession stands with tables and benches and lots of shaded areas with basketball and volleyball courts, changing room with lockers, and lots of fun. North Bergen pool memberships starting at $165 for the season, $95 for seniors. For more pool information, scan this QR code with your phone. I'm Elisa Sinchan and I'll see you in the pool. Stevens Jersey City Ford Certified Parts and Service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friends Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Heides. And as I just mentioned a few moments ago, today I'm joined with Hudson County Commissioner Bill O'Day. Commissioner, always a pleasure. Good to see you, John. Good to see you as well. So uh, first, let's just go back to last week. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, traffic safety at Vision Zero. Obviously, this is something that uh, we've heard from Safe Streets uh, JC, Bike JC, uh, and their affiliates up north as well. So obviously, they want to see some improvements, especially on Boulevard East. And you had a unanimous approval of this resolution. Just tell me what this aims to do and why you supported it. So first, they came to me and asked me to sponsor the resolution to have us file the application, which I did. And thank goodness, by the end, everybody supported it. 
wasn't that simple, as it rarely is. But what it will do is this allows us to file for, for a Vision Zero plan, grant. I think we're going to file for about a half a million dollars, go up to a million dollars. Then that planning process will begin, and upon the completion of that process, we'll be able to access millions of dollars from the federal government. There's a billion dollars a year for the next five years to implement, whether, whether it is things like bike lanes, whether it is traffic calming devices, whether it is um, signals or, or signage to show uh, speeding levels, like we just did recently in JFK Boulevard between Communipur and Sip Avenue. It takes a lot longer than it should, but there are many things that are part of it. And even if we're not successful in getting the grant, I spoke to the NJTPA, and the NJTPA can be our lead in doing our planning grant without that funding. That's with, a turnback authority? New Jersey, no, uh, transport, North Jersey Transportation. Okay. So, um, but again, without a plan, you can't apply for the implementation money. So we have to get the plan done. And we bring all the stakeholders together and get, bring the professionals. And then whatever they come up with, we should all agree to implement. All right, very good. So on the political spectrum, of course, there's no shortage of topics, but uh, let's start with you. There's this rumor that uh, there's a, you know, I guess, behind the curtain campaign, if you will, to be the next state senator in the 31st legislative district. What's your take on this? The last time I saw Senator Cunningham, she gave no indication that she's not running. So Sandra Cunningham is a friend. Glenn was a close personal friend of mine for many years, so I don't even discuss that possibility as long as Senator Cunningham continues to be the state senator and take that position. So, Fair enough. So as of this moment, you're running for re-election on the Board of Commissioners yes. next year. Yes, absolutely. So what about, I mean, I know you just said you don't want to try to predict the future, but also there's talk that, uh, you know, 2025 may be finally the year we see uh, Mayor O'Day in Jersey City. What do you think? Well, again, Mayor Fulop hasn't announced that he's not running for mayor re-election. He's a close ally. I've worked close with him for many years. If for some reason there's stories of him running for governor and he's raising a lot of money or true, I think that that's something I would look at seriously. Um, and in doing that, I think I would first look at who else might run. Um, what matters to me most is having a good person, being the mayor of Jersey City, someone who's committed to the city, committed to the issues that are important to me. Um, and if maybe there was someone else, I'm not locked into having to run. But if not, and Mayor Phillips not running, yes, certainly that's a real possibility. All right. So also on the county level, we know that uh, Tom DeGee, the county executive, is retiring at the end of his term, and he's looking to be succeeded by Craig Guy, who obviously is his chief of staff, and uh, someone who you also know well. So what do you think about his candidacy? I like Craig. I've worked closely with him on a lot of issues. In fact, he was very helpful in getting the support for the Vision Zero uh, resolution to apply for the planning grant. Um, you know, he's done well on an administrative level. Him and I have had some philosophical disagreements. And if he's the county executive, I would assume that we'd still probably have some disagreements. But that's what makes government work. I, I have to say he's been pretty um, successful in lining up some big names. I saw that Governor Murphy actually uh, already endorsed him. And he hasn't even formally announced. That's pretty good. I mean, that's not a bad way to start a campaign no, no, in New Jersey. Not bad at all. But, uh, but yeah, a perfect segue because they're doing that informal kickoff and I guess informal endorsement next week at the Liberty House, as you're well aware. And they're, both, they're getting some heat from the progressives because the governor, while he has condemned some of the actions of Councilwoman at Large Amy DeGees, he hasn't called for a resignation. So what do you think about that pers uh, perspective and, what do you th and where do you personally stand on that? On which Amy DeGees thing? Look, there's a process, and she's allowed to go through that process. At the end of that process, she will have to publicly give an explanation for what happened. Um, so I think you let the process go through. The process should happen quickly. The process in itself may or may not have her to be required to reveal the details or her explanation of those events. And if it doesn't, she really will have to make a public explanation. And she said she was going to do that, not at last week's council meeting, but the council meeting before. So I would take, I would take that as the approach that I would look at at this point in time. All right, Commissioner, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back.
Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, Light Rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Hudson County View live at Uncut. Chad Arhitis and still here with Hudson County Commissioner Bill O'Day. So, Commissioner, uh, obviously, well, maybe not obvious to everyone, but you used to be on the Jersey City Council. Correct. So, uh, based on that, you know, do you think that Councilwoman DeJesus conduct uh, necessitates a resignation just from like a moral or ethical perspective? I couldn't answer that question until I know her explanation. She's entitled to give an explanation. Once she's given an explanation, then people can assess it. And again, I think she's advised by a lawyer not to give an explanation until her, her court proceedings have been completed. So uh, me, I probably wouldn't listen to my lawyer, but <laughs> that's probably not the smartest thing to do either. So. All right, fair enough. So as you're aware of it, as I mentioned at the top of the program, uh, a big shot in the arm for the Jersey City Board of Ed, $89 million yeah. off of this successful challenge over American Rescue Plan funds. Uh, so, you know, first, just obviously, I'm sure you're happy about that, but just wondering, you know, we hear all the time about the city and the Board of Ed at odds over their finances. I mean, is there any, any uh, talk about having a relationship between the county and the Board of Ed to try to help them through this? So I've done a, a one Zoom call with some of the board members and the superintendent to see how I could be helpful. I'm ready, willing, and able to lend my expertise um, to be helpful to them in any way that I can. Uh, we talked about some of the facility stuff that maybe maybe I could use some of my economic development expertise to help them. Yeah, look, it, it's troubling to me that the city doesn't have a good relationship with them. I mean, they need to have a good relationship with them. Um, there's so many issues that affect our children. Um, so that's, that's something the city should be working on. But from whatever role the county can play, I'm there to help. And they know that. Uh, and I speak to a number of the board members on a pretty regular basis. Okay. And uh, also, let's talk about the uh, Route 440 emergency repairs. Oh. So obviously not exactly a dream scenario oh. for anyone involved that it got extended. Is there anything you could tell us about, you know, the completion of this? Somebody told me maybe a week to 10 days from now. Who knows? It's a nightmare. Even the way a lot of it's handled. I rode that way because you can get on northbound starting at um, Culver. And there were some cars going southbound. Uh, how they get there, where they go, um, why did they cut it off at Communipore and couldn't cut it off further. Think about the businesses in the Hudson Mall. Their, their level of um, drop off of business is probably 70%. There's the poor Dunkin' Donuts guy right past Communipore. He might as well be out of business and no one could get to that place. And then I look at streets like Mallory Avenue where I now see 18 wheel truckers going down sometime, which is frightening because there's two schools that you, the children would normally walk from there. So it's not a fun situation, and the sooner it gets resolved, the better. How they didn't know about it sooner and do it during the summer, I don't know. Fair enough. So on another topic, let's uh, talk about these two luxury towers that could be coming to the waterfront, uh, something the planning board will be voting on shortly. So, uh, you know, basically, I see some people online are not particularly happy with the plan because there's no affordable units and others, you know, basically saying there's no such thing as bad housing. I mean, what do you think, good or bad for Jersey City? I think that we should try to get affordable housing into every building possible. I think there's no reason why 
developers can't put some affordable housing in any new buildings that are being done. Certainly the state of New Jersey has tied all of their incentives to 20%. So whether it's 20% or lower, um, I think the city should have a strong policy that gets and requires affordable units in it. But beyond that, there should also be contributions for developers so we can develop affordable units in our neighborhoods because it's cheaper to build a four-story building affordable. You can get more units for the same price than if you put it in a high-rise. But in cases like the one you cited, I don't think they're giving any money to anyone either, are they? So. All right, yeah, gotcha. So uh, finally, let's, let's end on a lighter note. So let's, every time we run into each other, you know, we were talking about your book, or your TV show, or <laughs> you know, your foray into uh, media and entertainment, I guess. So tell us a little bit about what you're working on and what we might see from that perspective. So a number of years ago, I wrote a book, The Legacy of Hagsville. I might sell three more copies from people that watch this. I just got an $11 royalty check still <laughs> eight years later. But um, so I've been working with Diana Holtzberg, uh, Emmy Award winning producer out of New York with a, a Hollywood producer and someone from who had a long term at CNN in a leadership role to try to turn that into kind of a TV series. And I've been working on a fictional book that involves um, murder, uh, political consulting consultants, masterminding murders of other political consultants, which doesn't might, sound very fictional. It doesn't sound very fictional, but it's fictional. But I think whenever you write, you write about characters that you or people you kind of know and you make compilations often of people I know and they form new characters. So I have a lot of fun writing. I literally write in the morning riding a stationary bike. Excellent. So that's going to be like a show, riding a book on a bike. <laughs> I don't think right. I want to watch it, but. All right, Kamish, any closing oh. thoughts? No, no, it's always good to talk to you. you. You get a lot of good information out to the public. I think that's important um, now more than ever, and you're always a gentleman. Thank you. Same to you. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We're not done yet, but we are going to take another commercial break. Introducing the all-new Ford Maverick, a truck for people who do stuff and people who make stuff. People like Gabrielle Union. I make this look good, don't I? Who haul whatever they want to wherever they want. Like wood to build things made of wood with. And friends to get weird with. It's for long trips that the standard hybrid engine with a targeted EPA estimated city fuel economy rating of 40 miles per gallon helps with. That an 8 inch touchscreen connects with. And any trip that this interior makes more comfortable. We'll let Gabrielle tell you all about it. Or I could just tell them it's a Ford truck that starts at less than 20,000 MSRP. Yep, that works too. The all new Ford Maverick, built to defy expectations. Ana Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state of the art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital, ER, police or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for Safe Haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven. a lot of punch packed into this Bronco Sport. It's got a ton of horsepower, I love it. All right, now we're getting hairy, now we're getting the fun stuff. Yeah. I like how we can get over or around almost anything. Yeah, I dig your ride. <laughs> I super dig it. It's gonna be a good day. 150 around front, please. We designed the F-150 to be tough. And we delivered on towing and payload like you'd expect. We also made it smart. 
starting with an available hybrid powertrain. This engine also allows you to use your truck as a high wattage generator. It's the kind of capability that a truck owner's really never had before. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Hytus. So as I mentioned at the top of the program, obviously we have a lot to uh, run through. So let's talk about something that happened last week. We heard from the New Jersey Attorney General's office and the reason being they were talking about this June 3rd shooting in West New York. As you can see in the video that we're about to show you that you've probably seen already on YouTube or our social media pages, but in case you haven't, viewer discretion is advised. There is some coarse language in which you may consider some uh, violent images. So with that said, this was an incident where police had a 911 call that came in for a domestic violence incident. They responded to the location and it turned out that there was a man who had two handguns. Police approached him at his door. He fired a few shots. One officer was hit, and uh, we've uh, identified that officer. I believe we're the only outlet to do so at this time, and uh, that was actually Officer, uh, give me one second, that was Samuel Molina Urena, and he's made a full recovery, thankfully. And the suspect in this incident, his name is uh, Kevin Calandres, was fatally shot. So we're just going to show you the video, keeping that discretion in mind. James, if you have any more... Oh, oh, oh! Oh, shit! Stop, stop! Stop, I got a shot fired! The gun's next to him, throw! Stop! Stop! Cross the street! Watch the gun, watch the gun! Watch the gun! Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Crossfire! Guys, the crossfire! Don't get that gun! Oh fuck! Fuck! Get out! Get out! Crossfire! Get on the left! Then come around this side! Come around this side! Come behind us! Come behind us! Yo, he took a shot at me! Holy shit! Yeah, I think I'm good. Go to the side. I'm okay. I'm okay. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Go. Back up. Back up. Yes, got you. Hold on. There's two guns. What do you need? Two guns. Two guns. Yes, two guns. Cover on this side. Do not. No one move from this side. Okay. So like I said, you know, obviously it looked like a pretty high intensity incident to put it mildly. And this is still under investigation by the state attorney general's office. It doesn't appear from what we've seen to this point that there would any, be anything to warrant charges against police officers, but we're going to keep an eye on it. And regardless of what the outcome is, we're going to let you know as soon as possible. So moving right along, we're going to talk uh, about 9-11 a little bit. And actually in Hudson County, we have a new memorial. As I said at the beginning of the show, that's at 79th Street and Boulevard East. Of course, that's in North Bergen. This is technically a Hudson County monument, even though it's going to be sitting right across from James J. Braddock Park, uh, which is, of course, also a county park. And this is paying tribute to all 155 Hudson County residents that sadly lost their lives on September 11, 2001. This was, of course, unveiled on Sunday at the 21st anniversary. So we heard from Hudson County Board of Commissioners Chair Anthony Veneri, who you guys know is also the chair of the Hudson County Democratic Organization, and he said, we were all Americans that day. We all came together for one purpose. We never forget. And those words are going to be inscribed here forever. We haven't forgotten. So succinct, straightforward to the point. And we also heard from our county executive, Tom DeGees. And uh, he, he said quite a bit. Uh, but the long story is he said, from the tip of North Bergen all the way down to the tip of Bayonne in the south, people lined the Palisades to watch it. Maybe that's what we take it a little more personally than other people would. Uh, you know, talking about you know, the local reaction, of course, on that fateful day. So this memorial is up and uh, got a big reaction when people saw it. And we also, you know, had a lot of our North Hudson officials, of course, State Senator North Bergen Mayor Nick Sacco, the North Bergen commissioners, the superintendent of schools, 
Assembly Members Jimenez and Mejia, we Yorker Mayor Richard Turner, West York Mayor Gabriel Rodriguez, and many more. So pretty much the whole North Hudson elected community came out for this one. We're going to take one more break. We'll be right back. The Ford Maverick is a smaller truck, but the available 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine has plenty of horsepower and torque and allows you to tow all kinds of stuff. And if you need to take the Maverick out past city limits, there's select drive modes to take on different terrains as well as the FX4 off-road package with all-wheel drive. Growing up can be tough on kids. So much is going on in the world that can cause depression or anxiety. Unusual behavior for more than six months could mean they need help. Don't wait. For real-time mental health support and counseling, call New Jersey's Children's System of Care. CSOC offers free mental health supports, substance use treatment, and services for intellectual or developmental disabilities for all kids up to age 21. Call now, 1-877-652-7624. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Heides. So, a few more before we call it a week here. So, let's talk about Anthony Varvaro. He was a late Port Authority police officer that also pitched in Major League Baseball for the Atlanta Braves, the Boston Red Sox, and the Seattle Mariners. Out of his six seasons, four were sent with the, spent with the Braves. So unfortunately, this was an unexpectedly tragic element to 9-11. He's a Staten Island native who had been living in Jersey City with his wife and four children recently. He was up early to go to the 9-11 Memorial in Manhattan, and sadly, a driver going the wrong way on the turnpike in Jersey City uh, collided in their vehicles, and unfortunately, neither of them survived. So just, you know, an awful set of circumstances. I mean, not much else you could really say about that. The one thing that we could say that is the slightest bit positive is that the friends and family have started an official GoFundMe page, and they set a pretty ambitious goal of $4 million. And as we speak right now, they're already at $228,635. 1,400 donations have come in. So a groundswell of support from this region, from this community. So we can find maybe just a little bit of solace in that. And this was organized by Matthew Martino. Uh, he doesn't specifically mention his relationship, but he must be a close friend of the family. And I'll just read you the page description. He says, nothing in the world mattered more to Anthony than his family. And this collection will ensure AJ, Johnny, Christian, and Savannah are taken care of for the future. Due to the enormous amount of inquiries from a wide variety of people, teams, and organizations that Anthony touched, the Varvaro family has requested one central donation location. If you wish to donate to the Varvaro family, please do so here. And if you're interested in contributing, that link can be found on our website. So with that said, we're going to move beyond uh, the 9-11 coverage, and we're going to talk a little bit uh, more nitty-gritty politics. We're going to talk about CarePoint Health suing RWJ Barnabas Health. And uh, some bold allegations, they're claiming that the Jersey City Medical Center is trying to form a monopoly and basically get CarePoint out of business and that they've been colluding with Hudson Regional Hospital. It's uh, not shocking to hear for those of you that have been following the past two years. Of course, CarePoint and HRH have just been going bare knuckle pretty much over who's going to be running the Bayonne Medical Center and to a lesser extent the Hoboken University Medical Center. Of course, that fight really hasn't moved very far. And the uh, one with the Medical Center, the Jersey City Medical Center, I should say, at CarePoint Health has going on for many years. So there's a lot here, and we're short on time, so I'm just going to read you a couple paragraphs. The, this case involves a years-long systemic effort by RWJ, a conspiracy with others, to destroy competition and to monopolize the provision of general acute care hospital services and related health care services in northern New Jersey. This effort particularly targeted Hudson County, New Jersey, to the detriment of CarePoint and the public by aiming to destroy the three hospitals operated by CarePoint as independent competitors. 69-page lawsuit filed in federal court. Again, that's on HudsonCountyView.com. Finally, before we call it a day, on Thursday, we had this Jersey City Council meeting once again over five hours, though this public portion was only about two and a half hours compared to all over four in August. That was August 17th. So I'm just briefly going to go by the numbers. So last month, 152 speakers signed up to speak. 66 did not participate. And 58 called for DGs to reside. This time, 94 signed up to speak. 41 were not present when called, and 29 actually called for a resignation. So obviously, the numbers are not what they were a month ago. So we're going to see what happens next. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.